welcome to Combinations, the podcast from North Staffordshire Combined Healthcare NHS Trust. And in today's episode of Combinations, we're going to be showcasing our most recent patient story, as at Combinations we like to showcase all of the trust, whether that be chatting to the teams about new projects and innovations, or getting inside and having a look what actually the services are doing and what the patients and service users think. Today's story is Shirley and her husband Phil giving reflections and insights to the importance of compassionate care from the frontline staff. And this one looks at Ward 6 and how their experiences at North Combined were. Hello, my name is Shirley Houghton and the ward I was on was Ward 6. Um, I haven't been well for some time. And my husband, actually, he felt that I needed to go back to hospital because I've been in the Royal Stoke Hospital. But he didn't feel that I was improving sufficiently to what he felt I should be. I just imagined it would be an ordinary hospital, like the Royal Stoke where I've been, where there's wards, you know, that you go into. It is a beautiful building. That was really very, very beautiful, but it frightened me somewhat because I wasn't prepared really. But then, of course, I thought, well, I'm here. I've got to go through with it. So that's what I did. I stayed put. I was still feeling very frightened, but not as frightened because gradually, gradually as the weeks carried on, I began to get to feel safer and to feel that all the staff were all there with me, helping me. I was going into the various rooms. We were having dancing. We were having the service, the church service, and we were doing all sorts of things. You know, I mean, that really did make a big difference. Going for walks every day. Well, not every day, but certain days. I even went one day, I went to the supermarket with a couple of ladies and they gave me some cash so that I could go and actually buy some food for myself. And I could also make it so that I was able to spend for the, the food and able to get the change and be in a position where I was capable of doing that. I knew I would be capable, but to be in a hospital and to be with patients, to be with staff, when they actually do take you and allow you to do that, then you also feel more confident because I was able to do it. And I thought, oh, good. If I go home, I will be able to go and do my shopping, you know, be able to use the cash because you start to think, how capable you are. And I just felt as if I was in on holiday. <laughs> yes, I did feel like I might be on holiday, although you're not. I mean, because sometimes when I'd go to bed, I would lie there and I would think, and I'd think about being at home, being with my family, being with my children, you know, grown up now, grandchildren, Philip, thinking about Philip. Now he's here, he's by himself, you know, he's in his own, in the house and obviously I hope he's okay. The staff have been amazing, all the staff, and I've been helping as well to do all sorts of things like in the breakfast kitchen, you know, going in there and having my breakfast and then helping with the dishes, washing up, tidying the kitchen you know, and all those sort of things. So I began to feel, I felt as though it was at home. Although it isn't at home, but I did feel with all the people there, they were all making me very at home. Stephen, Steve, he was absolutely amazing. He would take me when there was a service coming, you know, from the church. I would sit down and we'd listen to the service and I'd sing to the hymns. And that was wonderful. There was a hairdresser with Stephen and also a lady as well, both of them. And Stephen did my hair and he'd take me into there and it was wonderful. My nails were done, facial, and at Christmas having my hair done. 
It was just a joy, it was a treat. And the lovely Christmas presents I had also from the staff. They bought me Christmas presents. And I didn't expect that. And I thought that was just wonderful. Well, I just think they're there every second of the day. They're there for patience. They make you feel that you're safe in every way. And I think that's very important. Yes, I do think the hospital is a wonderful place. And I think the one thing that I realised, and I ought to have realised it before Shirley was in there, but nevertheless, when you see it for yourself, it comes home to you. And that is that um, psychiatric hospitals are, or should be, and certainly Harklands is one, a place of therapy and curing and, and care. Yeah. And not just a dumping ground for whatever. And I think that's really, really positive as far as places like Harplands are concerned. And if there was one message I was going to give to, you know, the world at large, it, 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 was exact, it is exactly that, that uh, places like Harplands are worth, as a society, investing in because they are places of care and, and, and therapy and not dumping grounds. Exactly, yeah. I feel too. I feel that people come in and they're scared. We're all scared. But by the time they've been in, I'm sure they start to feel confident and they feel cared for. And that is the best thing you could have, isn't it? That's the best thing anybody could have, is to feel loved, needed and wanted. I think we all need that, don't we? I've even felt I've wanted to go back. Isn't that strange? I've, I've felt, I've, I've sort of got up in the morning and I've thought, I've started thinking about what I would be doing now with Steve, you know, where he's now, he's coming round with the cups of tea and he's saying, would you like a cup of tea, Shirley? <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, I wished I was there now having a cup of tea with Steve, you know, and all the things that they are doing. And... Yes, it's quite, it's quite amazing. There is one thing that strikes me, and it's something that I have taken up with the Trust uh, through PALS, and that is, I mean, in Shirley's particular case, all this began when she had a stroke, and she was a week on the stroke ward, and it was known when she was on the stroke ward that there were cognitive problems. But yourselves or the you know any part of that particular department weren't invited to get involved and I think that that's a mistake. I think that if they're going to have patients particularly where there's no physical disability after the stroke but there is you know there is cognitive disability then they really need to take a holistic attitude a holistic approach to these people and get the right people involved from day one. I get the impression that there is a lot of insularity between different departments. Um, and I think that that, from the point of view of the good of the patient, particularly, is a mistake. I think if there is, a, if there is an area of expertise that is required outside of your own, you should not feel too proud to invite it in. You know, you can end up you know, in an emergency situation where somebody has to go into Harplands Hospital. Um, and this was five months after the event. Um, and that five months period was a period of great difficulty for all concerned. And there was no um, backup there. There was, no, uh, there was nobody to, to, to turn to on this at the time, and it eventually led to Shirley having to go into Harplands. And if there had been the backup, if there had been the involvement of these people from day one, it may not have had, it wouldn't have had to have happened, I'm convinced of it. You know, and thankfully, I was very fortunate to be in, in the, you know, the hospital I was now in. And I think I was very well looked after, very cared for. And that is something which is very precious. I just want to thank everybody. There are so many people, too numerous to probably know all the names. 
But I just want to say a very big thank you for, well, for making me well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I'd like to second that as well. Um, mm. The patience with which uh, people answered the phone to me more or less every day when I phoned up to find out how she was was, was quite amazing. So thank you. Thank you isn't, isn't, it isn't big enough really to say thank you. But to me, I'll never forget. I will never, ever forget this. I will be grateful for the rest of my life. So that is Shirley's experience and this is one of many patient stories that we've had. If you'd like to check out any more of the patient stories from our trust you can go over to our YouTube channel and find a playlist full of those and it's really nice to hear and it's something that as a trust we're very proud of to hear that the service users and patients are having great experiences with our staff in and around Harplands and the other locations. If you are new to the podcast, this is Combinations from the North Staffordshire Combined Healthcare NHS Trust, and we post our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud. So if you are interested in more of our episodes that we release every two weeks, you can go follow us on your platform of choice. The content that we've got planned for the Combinations podcast is really exciting. We're going to have teams come and speak on the Combinations podcast about what their service does, what they enjoy about the job and have some insights to mental health that you may have not seen before. And we've also got some projects that we're going to be announcing and talking about on the podcast that has been happening, which are pretty big as well, not only for the trust, but for the local network and system. That is today's episode of Combinations over. We will see you in two weeks' time with something new from North Staffordshire Combined. Mm-hmm.